a look at the celebrations that were being made in their honour. Um, and then they will be getting a couple of days of checkups. Uh, we know a little bit about the, some of the problems that they've got. One of them, uh, Mario Gomez has a touch of pneumonia, but it's not meant to be too bad. Uh, they all have some pretty horrific dental uh, situations, and, and they will all be having treatment on their teeth today. Uh, other than that, it's a little bit of uh, some skin rashes, uh, and uh, that's about it as far as the physical side goes. And, and when the final mine and Luis Ortua came out, he was greeted by the president, wasn't he, amongst others, who said to him, you're a good boss, which is an understatement, really, isn't it? This is the man who, when they were underground and nobody had found them for 17 days, I think it was, it was he who organised a kind of shift pattern and kept them working to that pattern, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. He was the, the, the boss of the shift anyway, and he just carried on uh, acting in that role. And as you say, he, he delegated tasks. He said, we're going to keep busy, we're going to keep active, uh, not just to keep themselves fit, but to keep their minds occupied. And he really was the, the leader of the whole thing. And that's why I think he was chosen to be last, because everyone knew that that would be the the person who would receive the most attention, and so it was, it was a tribute to his leadership. Thanks, George. Different characters, different strengths, different weaknesses. But once the celebrations are over, how will the miners, uh, these 33 individuals, set about rebuilding their lives? Well, Bob Paxman served with the SAS before founding the charity Talking to Mines, which specialises in the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Uh, Bob's been kind enough to come into the studio to talk to us about this. What about the fallout, Bob? Well, certainly, um, over, uh, you know, over the, over the coming months um, and coming years, initially you're going to have um, a percentage of them that uh, suffer from yeah, episodic memories, yeah, single memories. Um, that may become apparent with... Uh, what does that mean? Well, they, they, they'll, they'll relive, um, you know, in a negative thought pattern, they'll, they'll relive. They'll the, still be the, there, in a sense. Yeah, they'll yeah. still be there. Um, and that, that may manifest itself in nightmares of flashbacks, um, you know, anger, aggression. You know, there's, there's many different symptoms you know, with post-traumatic stress disorder. And in the long term, um, you know, anything up to about 14, 15 years, people can then start to develop severe stress-related uh, conditions around, you know, what's actually happened. So, it's a, yes, yeah, it's a long-term long thing. Yeah, and how's, how do you deal with it then? Well, certainly, we've, we've taken a completely different approach uh, because... Yeah, the existing forms of therapy are trauma-focused, you know, CBT, EMDR, psychotherapy and counselling. And what we've done is we've, we've taken um, everything that's not the trauma. So if you, um, instead of focusing on the problem, we're looking at everything that's not the problem. Um, so we're, we're looking for the root cause of the problem and then reframing that and uh, all the symptomology drops away. So kind of accentuate the positive. Is, is the, yeah, yeah, is, is yeah the, basically. Is the, yeah. Did you have it? Yeah, I was diagnosed with PTSD about seven years ago, um, and I was told that uh, basically to shut up and take the drugs. Well, that's not acceptable in my, my model of the world. How many people throughout <laughs> history have had this and not known about it or just suffered in silence or not silence, as the case may be? You think about the, the Great War, you think about the Second World War. Oh, yeah. Now at least we have a modern psychological approach, don't we? Well, it, it, there's certainly a, a medical clinical approach, which is um, yeah, trauma-focused. Um, and since, uh, since Roman times, you know, first documented you know, Carthage in Roman times, um, you know, people with nightmares and flashbacks, yeah. you know, even Winston Churchill, he had his black dog, which he called his symptomology of PTSD, which would follow him around. And he was bipolar, wasn't he? Well, you know, the, the, the symptomology of bipolar and PTSD yeah. is very, very similar. Right. Well, so, we've mentioned you know, big events like the World Wars and what have you, mm. but it doesn't have to be events on that scale that, that cause it, does it? It can be personal events, smaller it could, events. It could be a car accident, it could be an assault, it could be a whole multitude of different things. I bet there's lots of people out there who, who, who have it and maybe just they don't yeah. realise that it can be, you know, diagnosed in this way. You know? Yeah, and, and possibly they've even had an incorrect diagnosis. Mm. Um, Bob, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. It's uh, ten minutes past eight, let's talk about